Okay, this is Anthony Priscilla, and I'm going to be doing some probability and statistics uh, with my class today. This first problem, if a couple plans to have five children, what is the probability that there will be at least one girl? Assume boys and girls are equally likely. And after you calculate that probability, it asks, is that probability high enough for the couple to be very confident that they will have at least one girl and five children. Well, let's see. So we want to know the probability of getting at least one girl. Well, the probability of at least one girl would be one minus the probability of getting no girl. At least one girl means you have either one, two, three, four, or five girls. The only way that couldn't happen would be if you had no girls. So let's calculate the probability of having no girls. That would be the same as getting all boys. And the probability that the first child is a boy is one half. The probability the second child is a boy is one half. The probability of the third child being a boy is one half. The probability the fourth boy, or the fourth child is a boy, and so forth. So it'd be one over thirty-two. We could have written that as one half to the fifth power. So the probability of getting no girls is one over thirty-two. So the probability of at least one girl would be one minus one over thirty-two. So if we think about 1 is 32 over 32, minus 1 over 32, the probability of getting, no, of, of getting at least one girl is 31 over 32. That's pretty close to 1. So the answer to the first question, what's that probability of getting at least one girl? One over, uh, excuse me, 31 over 32. Now, can we be it's can the couple be very confident they will have at least one girl? Well, this is so close to one, we would have to say, yes, this couple should be very confident that they're going to have uh, at least one girl because the probability is so close to one. Now, for problem number two. Problem two says the data represents. Let's see, this is problem number two. The data represents the results for a test for a certain disease. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the individual actually had the disease, yes or no? Did they test positive or negative? Like there were 145 people that actually had the disease that tested positive. There were 11 people that didn't have the disease but still tested positive. Similarly, 22 people had the disease but tested negative. 122 didn't have the disease and test negative. Those are the ones that should be. Should be testing yes if the uh, positive if they actually had the disease. It should test no. A negative if they didn't have the disease. We're asked to find, assume one individual from the group is selected at random, find the probability of getting someone who tests positive given that he or she had the disease. So we want to know the probability of a person testing positive given that they had the disease. The ones that had the disease are the yes. So, the well, let's see, add up 145 and 22, that's 167. So, 167 people actually had the disease. How many of those tested positive? Well, 145. Now, we can punch that into our calculator. Let's see. Ooh. Oh gosh. Uh, 
No. Hold it. It's sort of hard to get this calculator here without a glare. Well, if we punch in 145 divided by 167, we get 0.868. Notice I rounded it to three decimal places. 